Okay, welcome back. Uh, now it's time for the last video. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to get started using the Scratch Visual Programming Language. Uh, the Scratch Visual Programming Language uh, exists in the cloud, meaning you actually have to go to the website, the Scratch website, to use it. You don't download it to your computer. So you see it's actually scratch.mit.edu. If you put this into your browser, there you go. This is where it will take you. Now, uh, it's best to create an account before you get started making projects. That way they'll be saved to your account. I'm not going to go through that right now because it takes, you know, several minutes and I don't want to take up your time doing that. It's pretty self-explanatory if you've ever saved, uh, signed up for an account with like YouTube or Google. But just make sure you do that before, excuse me, join right here, before you actually create a project so it doesn't get lost. So anyway, uh, I'm going to actually sign in, excuse me, I'm going to go to the create button, right? And this is where you can start creating things. It will take you to a project page. On this page, you'll notice that there is these videos here. These videos are mini tutorials that will reiterate a lot of the things I'm going to go through. So in addition to rewatching this video in the future, you can always go to one of these videos, right? and um, watch, watch these videos. They can help you do many of the things I'm gonna show you right now. But we don't need them, so I'm gonna click off them so we actually see the project page, right? This may look daunting at first, but I'm gonna explain what we have here, right? Over here on this side is like your project screen. I mean, this is actually what your project looks like or will look like. Imagine that's like, you know, the front of your, your TV monitor or computer monitor right there over here is a blank canvas where you actually write your code your program right here over here are the commands the basically the blocks the programming blocks that actually have the program commands embedded within them and you're going to snap them together to make a stack like lego blocks to tell the sprites which are your assets right here that actually are depicted on your screen it tells them what to do, right? When you load a new project, Scratchy or Scratch Cat is the default sprite. You don't have to keep keep Scratch Cat. You can actually uh, have Scratch Cat, you know, replaced or you know delete Scratch Cat. But for our demo, we'll leave Scratch Cat where uh, where they are. Now, Scratch Cat starts off being placed right in the middle of the screen. This screen here is on an XY grid. You do not see it. We can put it down later. Uh, I'll show you like how you can do that. But for right now, you just imagine X, excuse me, Y and X right here. Now, how do I get Sprite 1, Scratch Cat, to actually do something? Well, I go over here to the blocks, right? And you'll see there's different, the blocks fall under the code blocks, different headings, motion, Look, sound, events, control, sensing, operators, variables. We're going to start with the simplest one, motion. We want our sprite to move, right? So we say, we, we say move, we take this move block. That's the simplest block. I drag it over here to where the programming happens. Now, if I click on this or click on the green go flag, you'll see that Scratch Cat is going to move 10 steps and he always moves 10 steps forward, right? Uh, when, when the number is a positive number, not negative. So watch, I'll click 10 steps forward. I can change this number and make it 30 so that Scratch Cat goes a little further. I can also make it a negative number. So negative 40, Scratch Cat will now go backwards, right? So I'm going to keep it at 20, I think. Now I can start stacking these blocks. So let's say I want Scratch Cat to go forward, move 20 steps. Then I want Scratch Cat to turn 45 degrees to the right. Well, I can get this turn block, put that in there, make this 45 degrees, and you'll see what happens next when I click this stack. It's going to execute all of these blocks in the order that they are stacked, you know, from top to bottom. So forward and then turn, right? So now I've made Scratchy move forward 20 steps. 
go forward 45 degrees. Now I want him to move forward another 20 steps. Then I want Scratch Cat to go back to like the position he was in. So I'm going to get turn left, but make this minus 45 degrees, right? So now let's see what happens. Oh, he actually, uh, he moved forward. What I didn't take into account was he moved forward once he was turned and then turn 45 degrees so that's not really gonna work <laughs> so no big deal um what i can do is and by the way you can always click and drag scratchy around too right although um when i hit this move this this stack he's always going to move from where i dragged him uh unless and this is a really good feature i assign him to start when I click the green flag or the stack in a, to a particular spot on the, uh, the, the, the page, right? So what I do in that case is, right, I go to the background or backdrops. That's whatever's in the background here. And I click on choose a backdrop. And there's a bunch of preloaded backdrops I can choose, right? I go all the way to the bottom they have the X, Y grid, right? I click on that. Now this doesn't stay here, right? I'm just using it to sh demonstrate to you what happens, right? Like, you know, give you a good visualization. So first, I'm gonna actually uh, have Scratchy get him back upright. So what I can do is I pull this minus 45 degree um, block off the rest and I can click on this until he gets upright. So when I pull off this, an individual block and click on it, it just executes that block and not the rest of the stack. So now I got them upright. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of these blocks and start a new program so I can just take them and move them back to this area and they disappear. Now I have no program. And I'm gonna click and drag Scratchy. Let's see. And you'll notice as I move him around, if I look down here, it says Sprite 1. On the x-axis, he's minus 58. This is xy, 0, 0. And he's, on, he's at 6 on the y, or vertical axis, and on the x, or horizontal, right? He, there you go, now I move him there. He's on the x-axis, positive, on the positive side of 0, 98. And on the y, he's slightly above. It's sort of centered on his body. It's hard to see at 5. So. I can do that, or you know, I can even just go to these and type in the zero amount, zero, zero, right? And hit enter, and there you go. So he's right in the center now. Now let's say I want Scratchy to go up here, right? So I want him to start at zero, zero when I hit the green flag because it executes the program. So the first block I have to get is this one that says go to zero, zero. That means he'll, he's gonna go there. Now I could make this number anything. I could make it uh, positive X, like 45 and Y 20, you'll see. And if I click this, he's gonna go there. But I don't, I want him to start right in the middle at zero, zero. So now if I click that, like I was starting a program, that's where he goes. Now, though i want him to glide or slowly move to a different position on the xy grid so i go to this um, block glide two and it says glide one second two and where do i want to put him i want him to go up here so in order for me to figure out what that is i pull him up here and i can see the xy number right is 161 excuse me minus 162 and 110 right so what i have to do is i have to put in oops i screwed up i clicked on that button and it took him to zero zero so anyway i have to like put in minus 173 is where i want him to go right minus 173 oops put an extra zero and 113 put that over here now if I click on this, and remember, he's going to start off in the middle, the center, and then glide up. 
if I think he's gliding too fast, I can make this three seconds. And I'll start that again. Right, see, so he goes three seconds, or I can make it, if I want to go really slow, I can make it five. Let's try that. Okay, so now I'm going to sort of change this around and reverse it a bit. I'm going to have Scratchy go, um, I want him to go into the center, right? So I'm going to have him start over here now. So start at 173. Minus 173 and 113. And I'm going to have them come. I don't want to go zero. I want them to come to right about there. So that, what's that number here? Minus 74 and 3. So minus 74 on the x-axis. And 3 on the y. So if I start that, there you go. That's what I have in mind. Okay, so now that's like all you really need to know to get started with moving around on the screen. Um, let's talk about sound a bit. So you can actually uh, have, tell Scratchy to play certain sounds or any sprite for that matter. Now, it's going to be hard for you to hear them because of the nature of the way you have to record these things, but you, you'll hear a little bit. I'll turn my volume up all the way so you'll get a little bit of it. So what I want is once Scratchy gets done going to this point at, at number 74 on the minus 74 on the X and Y, uh, three on the Y, he's going to play a sound. I'm going to have him say meow. So let's see. Oops, let me start with that. Boy, he's going kind of slow. Okay, so there you go. Now, by the way, I want this glide to be like three. That's too slow. Uh, I could always change the volume of this by like putting that here, and I can make the uh, volume higher or lower. I should, you, you can make it like 50 or you can percent or 75, depending on how high or low you want. I'm just going to leave it as it is. So I don't want this. Um, but there we go. Now, so you can put in as many sound effects as you want. I, I don't really want a sound effect right now. Like I said, it's hard for you to hear them. So I'm going to take this off. Uh, now we're going to go into the looks button. And so you can actually visually represent sounds, meaning like, like, is in a, like in a cartoon, you can have a dialogue bubble. So we're going to grab in the looks tab, say hello for two seconds. So now when I click on this stack, Scratchy goes forward this far, says hello for two seconds, and it disappears. So there you go. Now, um, so that's pretty simple and rudimentary. Oh, by the way, I forgot this. You can also make Scratchy or any sprite bigger or smaller by, because, because the looks pertain to the size of the sprite, by grabbing set size two. And you put that, I would start it at the very beginning, because you want to make sure you set the size of the sprite before anything else. So he's at 100. Scratchy's at 100. I can make Scratchy at 50. Watch, and you'll see what happens when I hit this stack. Make him much smaller, right? I'm going to put him back at 100, but you get the idea. Now, so far, uh, I only have one sprite. Let's say you want to have two sprites on the screen. What do I do then? Well, over here in this sprite panel, right, you see this little choose a sprite? Well, I can click on this and it goes to a whole, um, you know, selection of basically predetermined sprites. I think it's better if you make your own, which I'll show you how to do a little bit uh, at the end. But right now we're going to pick, oh, let's see, what do we have? A squirrel. 
I think there is a ghost here somewhere that I like. Let's see if I can find the ghost. There we are. A ghost. Okay. Now, where do I want the ghost to start? Let's see. And you'll notice that when you are clicked on the sprite that is the ghost rather than scratchy, I don't see the program. Because that program was only, like if I go to scratchy, only for him. It only tells scratchy, the scratchy sprite, what to do. The ghost sprite, you have to give it the ghost sprite its own program. So I'm going to make it similar to the one scratchy had. I'm going to go to motion and have the ghost, like, start in a particular place. So start down here. And then what is that? X 184, Y negative 103. So I need to get the, what is it? It's the go to one, right? And you'll notice that what happens is when you actually pull the go to block from this area here, the motion menu, it actually has the X and Y that are already over here. So that's good. We're already started. Now, I also want the ghost to glide up and I'm manually pulling the ghost to about here. And so what's the X, Y here? 74 on the X and three on the Y. So I'm gonna use the glide. And what do you know? It's got those numbers in here. So whenever the motion blocks are in this menu here and you change the position, it picks them up and knows. So I picked that there. And let's try that. It's a little fast. I'm going to have it glide at about the same speed as Scratchy. So three. Right now, so what I want is Scratchy to start up in this corner, the ghost to start up over here and meet each other. The problem is right now, they are separate stacks of blocks. So um, if I actually was to start Scratchy, or excuse me, I started the ghost, right? I'm in the ghost, sorry. I can't start scratchy simultaneously. But there is something you can do. There is, if you go to the events button, there's a button, called, excuse me, a black called when green, green flag clicked, you grab that and put it on the top of your stack. And I'm gonna put it on the top of the stack for the ghost as well. What that means is when I hit this green flag, both stacks are going to execute when I at the same time when I hit that flag up here. So there you go. So right now, Scratchy says hello. I'm going to have him say something else. Let's see. Let's go back to Scratchy's program, right? And instead of saying hello, I can change this and have him say boo, right? And he says it for two seconds. So now let's play that. Remember, I click the green flag, it plays both. Boo. Okay. So now I want the ghost to respond. Here's the thing I know that Scratchy said this for two seconds, right? So now the ghost is going to remember they move at the same time, they glide for the same time, they meet in the middle. Scratchy says that for two seconds. So I need. And I go to the events tab again, and there's a wait button, right? Under the control down there. I'm sorry, we're in the control. Sorry, I got confused. We are in the control panel. And I need him to wait longer than Scratchy's. And you remember, his boo goes on for two seconds. He needs to wait longer. So I'm going to make that three seconds. And then afterwards, he's going to say something. So remember, where do I go when I need one of those? Dialog balloons, I go to looks and say hello. I put that there. And now this is what will happen when I hit green flag, right? They glide towards each other. Scratchy says boo. Ghost says hello for two seconds. But I don't want the ghost to say hello. I'm going to say, he's going to say that's, oops, that's my line. All right, so now if I click on that, boo for two seconds while the ghost waits for two seconds, then he said, or three, and then said, that's my line. Now Scratchy needs to say something. So remember the, the ghost says, that's my line for two seconds. I go back to Scratchy stack. 
He says boo for two seconds now. He's got to wait, but he's got to wait longer. He's got to wait for the ghost to make their response, which is two seconds. So Scratchy has to wait for three seconds too now at this point. So I have to go to control, get the wait, put it there, make that three seconds. Then after he waits, he's going to respond with another word balloon. So I go up to here and I say, say hello for two seconds, but I don't want him to say, say hello. And now this is... Scratchy's going to say, get lost, jerk. It's not a very nice cat. So now I hit the green flag, and we'll see what happens. Boo. Wait. That's my line. While Scratchy waits, and then get lost, jerk. So there. Um, now you may be wondering, well, I don't want this XY grid behind this. Okay, fine. You go back to the stage or background and you put choose a backdrop you can pick any of these here right like i said i you know i i prefer for those of you that are art teachers or have some artistic background for you to create your own stage but you know it's okay if you would like to create one yourself right i mean excuse me use one from the clip art if you want to do uh create a new one you could go to uh, paint right here. And you get taken to like the scratch paint, like the, the, the drawing editor. And you can basically, it's, if anyone's ever used Illustrator, you could, it's very similar. You could actually create, pick a fill color. So let's say I want it to be red. That. Then I can pick the block, cover the whole thing. There we go. Edge that up a little bit. So now, right, if I, um, if I like this, I can leave this screen and go back to the code screen, right? Now when I click on green flag, and you don't see the program blocks, you know why? Don't, don't, don't be upset. We're not clicked on either of these sprites to see their blocks. I click on them, then I can see it. Hit the green flag. Boo. That's my line. Get lost, jerk. Right? And that's our little narrative, our little story, right? So, you know, I just showed you how to um, create a custom backdrop background for, you know, so for the back. So you don't have to use clip art if you don't want to. But now I'll show you how to make your own sort of. Uh, costume or custom they call them costumes for the sprites your own custom sprite so if i go to scratchy right and you can do this with any sprite i'm on scratchy i go up to this tab that says costumes i can see that scratchy's got two costumes meaning that like basically he's got a little walk left and a right i didn't really use this and don't worry if it doesn't make any sense i just used costume one Right by default, it use, uses costume one unless you tell it to, and the way you where you do that is in code where it says um, looks, you actually can say switch to costume two. Right, you would put that up here. So when I would when we start this, so there you go. He's now in costume two instead of one. Right. Anyway, if I didn't want to use Scratchy and I wanted to use my own sprite. Um, what I can do is I can actually, you know, get rid of this sprite. So I can click on this um, and I go to this eraser right here. Click on it and I erase Scratchy here. Right now he's gone. Oh, I left a little bit right there. Okay, so uh, I need to replace Scratchy. So what I can do is I can actually, and I said just like a drawing program, if you've ever used one, I got a brush here, and you can pick the size of the brush, the brush color. I'll go to black, and I'm just gonna uh, just really quickly make like a. And you have to forgive me. I'm doing this real quick. I'm just gonna make like a rudimentary like base here. Uh, 
here we are. So maybe this is more in line with like uh, his temperament, this sprite's temperament. So now uh, when I go back to code, nothing's changed. It still says costume two. Uh, but when I click the green flag right now, instead of scratchy, I get this character. So, I mean, you can actually do much more sophisticated drawings than that. Uh, I don't, don't want to do that because I don't want to take up too much time. But uh, feel free to actually experiment with that. The other thing that you can do is you can... Uh, well, let me actually just change the other sprite. I'll do that one more time just so you see. So I go to Ghost, Costumes. Uh, I don't want this ghost or you know here's another thing I could erase this ghost like I did with scratchy or I can just sort of uh, amend him right so what I can do is I can actually take um, like the brush and I can give him like some crazy hair right like that something like that it's not very good I can give him some a big unibrow here too and then there we go so that's a little bit to get you started on um, making projects with scratch uh, I'm going to actually have one last video that I'm going to show you about how you can modify projects in scratch so I'll see you then and um, and we'll, we'll go over that.